Hi guys, welcome to the new Unity series where I will teach you how you can create your first 3D game in Unity. You won't need any code for that, we will be using Bolt, which uh, instead of lines of code, you are using nodes, and the language is pretty similar to the C Sharp, so you can easily learn Bolt and then uh, go to C Sharp. So the game is pretty simple, I can hit play, you can see that I have some basic player control, so I can move, jump, I need to avoid those obstacles, uh, they obviously decrease my health, which you can see down here, I can get to new levels, and collect coins, which are the score here. So, uh, this is the game, just getting over obstacles, and when I die, you will then see my high score. Yeah, like this, you can see high score is 12, now I have gotten only score of 9. So let's get started. We will begin by creating new project, so just open Unity Hub, hit new project, select 3D and type some name. We will begin with setting up the project and the scene. So for the project I will just create some folders, one will be for scripts, then other for materials, um, also for prefabs and so on, we can add them as we go. Uh, in this scene you can see that we have just camera, so we will create new empty game object which will be the player. And we can put the camera under the player. This means that when I'm moving with the player, the camera will be moving with the player. I will also make sure that the camera is on position 0, 0, 0 and the player 2, like this, and put the camera under the player. I will also create 3D object capsule, which will be the player's body. I will also put it on 0, 0, 0 and put it under the player. Now we can change position of the camera, that it is looking at the player from behind. Those basic transform tools that I am using can be selected here or you can use shortcuts W, E, R and T. So I will put it behind the player like this. And uh, I can put the game window somewhere here. And when I'm moving with the player, you can see that the camera is moving with the player. So this is ideal. Now we can create some ground for which I will create empty game object in the hierarchy and name it environment. And under this I will create 3D object, cube, and just scale it using those tools. I can put the player on the ground, maybe put it like here. Now we can create new script. So open folder scripts, create, visual scripting, and we are going to be using the script graph. This will be for our player. So on the player we need first to add script machine, so we can add here into the graph, we can add the graph that we have just created, uh, title can be player, and we can edit the graph which will open the graph window. Now there's many ways how we can make uh, movement for the player, but I'm gonna be using the physics. So for that reason I'm going to add a rigid body components to our player because without rigid body there's like no physics. So add component rigid body to the player. Here you can change the mass and all of that stuff. Uh, we will go under the constraints and just uh, freeze the rotation so that the player doesn't uh, fall down or something like this. And now in the script uh, we will be adding the velocity by using velocity set. Also if your nodes are named different than mine's, you can go into Edit, Preferences, under Visual Scripting. Here you have the human naming and I have it off. So if you want your nodes to be named the same as mine's, you want to turn it off. So we will be using the Set Velocity. For this we need to input the vector of the velocity, the rigid body, which we can leave on this, because we have the rigid body on the same object where we have the script and then some flow. So we want to be applying the force constantly. For this we will use update, which happens every single frame. 
uh, because we are going to be affecting only the left or right movement, it is automatically going to be moving forward, we need to somehow get input for the A and D. We can do this by on keyboard or which I will do is input axis. So input, input get axis and here we can get for example the horizontal or the vertical. Horizontal is the A, D and also arrows and the vertical is W and S. So I will type in horizontal So when I'm pressing A, this will be minus 1 and when D, this will be plus 1. Then we can create new vector, new vector 3, in which we will input all of this data that we will be then putting to the velocity. So we want the player to automatically be moving forward, which is on the Z position, as you can see. So we will be increasing the Z axis. So uh, to the Z, we can type um, the speed, for example, 5, it would be also good to create some variable for the speed. So under the object, I can create player speed and assign it some float, for example, 5, then get player speed and put it to the Z position. And when we press the A or D, we want to be affecting the X position, so we can easily connect this value to the X. Right now it would be actually better to multiply the whole vector with the player speed, so we can do multiply and just input the vector, the player speed, and here we can input some volume like 2.5. And here with the vector we actually need to normalize it, which will make it that when we are moving forward to the right, or when you are pressing forward and right at the same time, it will be moving at the same speed. Because if you would be pressing forward and right, it would be uh, the force would be greater. So we can just type vector normalize and use uh, use this volume. So input the vector, then we can multiply the vector by the player speed. So now we can try to add the velocity to the player. You can see that the player's Z position is changing automatically and when I press A or D I'm moving to the left or right. So now we have some basic player's position but we also want to add jumping which will be a bit harder. So with the jumping you might think that you can just add some force to the player which there's note uh, for add force but we actually can't because here we are setting the velocity so that the velocity would still be on zero. So that's why we need to input the velocity into the vector three. First, we need to get input for the key. So input get key and we can get uh, this one, input get key. So uh, key, this will be the space and when uh, when we are pressing the space, uh, we want the velocity to be something like five. And when we are not pressing the uh, space, we want the velocity to be just the current velocity, which means that when we are falling, the velocity is not going to be zero, but it's going to be just the current velocity, which would be uh, something about like minus two. For this, we will be using select on flow and here you can just input those values. So when we are pressing space, then um, the volume can be some float lateral, for example, five. And when we are not pressing the space, this means that this is false. So uh, it will take this B volume. We want the velocity to be just the current velocity. So we need to say velocity get Jit body velocity get and we want to get only the height uh, which is the y axis as you can see so we only need to get the y velocity which you can easily just because output of this velocity is vector as you can see so we can just say y get and get the current velocity like this so now where do we put this part of code we don't want to be importing it 
here because here we are normalizing the vector which we need only for the um, left or right or forward and back movement. So uh, after we multiply the vector by the player speed because we don't want to multiply the uh, jump height by the player speed. Here we can from this uh, vector we can get the x and the z and combine this y with the x and z. So here I can just say uh, x get, vector free x get, and vector free z get. Uh, here the output will be the y, so I can just create new vector free and set uh, the values. So x is this, z is this, and y is this volume. Um, I can normalize the vector, then I need to check if I am pressing the space. And after we have the value, we can just create the new vector with all of those values. And this vector is actually the uh, velocity that we want to set the player to, like this. Yeah, you can see that I can still move. I'm automatically moving forward, which you can see here, and I can also jump. But now the issue is that I, when I hold the space, I'm infinitely jumping. So for this, we don't need to create some ground check. I will also create some variable for the jump height so I can then easily change the height. So jump height, this will be type float, which is some number, and just drag it here and input it to the select, like this. So uh, for the ground check, we will need some variable, which will be type yes or no, if we are grounded or not. So this can be a uh, graph variable is grounded type bool. So we want to jump only when we are pressing space and when we are grounded. So we can just uh, add here and so when we are pressing the space and player is grounded, then we will jump. So how can we uh, check if we are grounded or not? We could create a collider under the player, but uh, then it would be kind of chaotic because we would have two colliders and it might mess up uh, other parts of our code. Instead is just uh, do physics sphere cast, which will cast a sphere collider, but it actually won't affect any other code. So physics sphere cast and here you have the parameters that the sphere cast is using. We will probably need uh, only the second one. We need to cast the sphere on update. So we are constantly checking if there is ground under the player. The origin is where the center of the sphere is. We want this to be uh, in the somewhere in the middle of the player. So we will need to create variable for the player capsule. Uh, it can be type game object. Just import the capsule here and we can just get the position. So just position get transform that position get and this will be the origins. So now the sphere would be somewhere in the middle of the player, but we want it to go uh, like below the player. So that's why we have the uh, direction here. Uh, if you want it to go down, we can just simply set the y to minus one. So like this, the radius is how big the sphere is. So we want it to be slightly smaller than the capsule. You can see that the capsule is 0.5, so I will put it to like 0.4. And the max distance is just the maximum distance of the collision detection. So if the sphere is 0.4 large, this means that it will be 0.2 here. Uh, the player is has height of 2, so this will be it should be 0.8. The max distance should be 0.8, and the layer mask, this is important is the layer in which it is detecting uh, the collisions. So this so we want to have uh, some layer ground. So we can select the ground. Here you have the layers. So we will add a new layer for the ground. And uh, select it here, layer ground. And in the script, we can just uh, add 
layer lateral, layer mask lateral, and just select the ground and import it to the layer mask. And uh, the output will be if the player is grounded or not. So we can say if set is grounded. And we will set it just to output value. So if it is detecting the ground, it will be true. If not, it will be false. So now even if I'm holding the space down, you can see that the player just jumps and then falls down and jumps again. Uh, obviously, if you would have different size of your capsule, then uh, uh, those parameters here would also be different. So now you have uh, just some basic player movement. In next video, I will show you how to add some of those obstacles which will damage the player and also add some coins which will add some score and maybe even more. I hope everything we have just covered works for you as well as it works for me. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!